uh, an organization started by uh, Mr. Richard Powers and Mr. Mr. Steve Powers, and they've done this on their own to make these tributes, and they go around the country with these Medal of Honor tributes. Now, as most of you probably know, the Medal of Honor is the highest military decoration you can achieve. Uh, we're talking about folks who have paid the ultimate sacrifice, a lot of them. Uh, people that who have gone above and beyond the call of duty. Those are the people that get this medal. And uh, so what we have here is, is a tribute to one of the people that actually lost their life and achieved the Medal of Honor uh, during World War II. And I'm going to let uh, Mr. Powers explain it to you. But, you know, this is for us. This tribute is for us. It's a, a thing for us to look up to. It's something that we can learn from. People who have not always thought about themselves, but thought about the unit, thought about their country, and gone above and beyond and done what is necessary for all of us, for our freedom. So I think we, we can uh, certainly respect this and learn from it. So uh, first of all, I want to introduce uh, Mr. Steve Powers. He was uh, class of 1981 here at Auburndale High School. His brother Richard is here. He's uh, Army retired, Sergeant First Class, class of 1984. Uh, and then I have a whole list of people, but uh, we've got folks. We've got class of 1965 here, at Auburndale High School, class of 1984. Whole bunch of alum Ar Arbor Day alumni, let's give them a round of applause. And, uh, I want to thank the principal for being here today, uh, Mr. Hill. Give him a round of applause. Too. Assistant principals, Mrs. Dine and Mr. Strong. placed in our trophy case here. First of all, it's an honor to be here. I mean, it's amazing to be able to come back to this school 30 years later. I barely passed, so if I get the math wrong, please forgive me, but I believe it was 30 years ago that I graduated from here. Some of these folks were much further back. We'll leave that alone. I want to talk to you a little bit about the tribute. I want to tell you about Jack Lucas. I want to tell you about some of the backstory of Mr. Lucas. There's the official story, and then there's the real story. They both gel together, but there's a lot more facts involved with it than just what you're going to see in that piece of glass. I want to start out by reading a citation. Now, I warned you that I graduated 30 years ago, so my eyes aren't what they used to be, so you've got to bear with me. Okay, this is the official citation that was read the day at the White House. For conspicuous gallant, Gallantry and intrepidity at the risk of his life above and beyond the call of duty while serving 1st Battalion 28th Marines. I might bend over, can you see it? Uh, 5th Marine Division during in action against the enemy Japanese forces on Iwo Jima, Volcano Islands, 20 February 1945, while creeping through a treacherous, twisting ravine which, can, which ran in close proximity to a fluid and uncertain front line on D-Day plus one, PFC Lucas and three other men were suddenly ambushed by a hostile patrol and savagely attacked with rifle and grenades. Quick to act when the lives of a small group were endangered by two grenades which landed directly in front of them, PFC Lucas unhesitatingly hurled himself over his comrades upon one grenade and pulled the other under him. Absorbing the whole blasting force of the explosions in his own body in order to shield his companions from the concussion and the murderous flying fragments, by his inspiring action and valiant spirit of self-sacrifice, he is not, he is not only protected, protected his comrades from certain injury or possible death, but he also enabled them to route the Japanese patrol and continue the advance. His ex exceptionally courageous initiative and loyalty reflect 
the highest credit upon PFC Lucas in the United States Naval Service. <coughs> that's the that's the story that was read at the White House. Now the real story about Mr. Lucas. Let me tell you about the tribute. The neck ribbon was given to me by Mr. Lucas some years ago. Long story short is Mr. Lucas, I used to work out in the gym a lot when I was still serving, and uh, Mr. Lucas punched me in the stomach. And I looked at him like, first of all, he's all about this big and he's about that big around, but he punched me in the stomach and I looked at him, what's wrong with you? You know, I didn't say anything because of who he was, but he went to the restroom, came sit back down, a few minutes later he walked by me again, he hit me in the stomach. This time, after the second time, I got in his face. And I asked him, I said, what's your problem? And then I told him that's how hard a soldier can be. One day, hopefully, you guys will be the same way. But at any rate, he became friends, he and I became friends, and then after a few months, he presented me with a snack ribbon. I was going to be selfish and put it in my house. So I was going to build something similar to that, put it in my house, and keep it. Uh, but after a couple weeks, I realized <clears throat> when I walked by, I didn't even notice it anymore. So I decided, well, I'm going to have to figure something out. <coughs> to do with this, so I contacted the local high school in Kentucky, which is where I live, uh, and gave it to them. They kept it for the entire school year, and they used it for education. Well, then other recipients heard about what I did. Next thing you know, I'm receiving all these items in the mail from these Medal of Honor recipients, and that started this story of building these tributes. So that's what I do. Me and Steve, we build these items, we place them in high schools to help you young men and women realize that there's veterans out there, not only Mr. Lucas. But there's people out there sacrificing every day that's living in a hole, that's eating garbage, <clears throat> and having bullets whiz by them every day to ensure the fact that you can sit in this classroom and learn about this great country. So do not take it and just accept it. You need to live it as well, okay? Um, now, the, the neck ribbon was worn by Mr. Lucas for a period of time. It is authentic. He has his DNA in it. Um, that sand that you see in the bottom of <clears throat> Many adults have never seen Iwo Jima sand. That's actual sand from the island of Iwo Jima. So feel free to look at it. Most students, when I present that tribute to school, and I tell them that that's Iwo Jima sand, they take a quick glance at it. But when I tell them that there's very possibly DNA from our American fallen in that sand as well, they pay a little bit more attention to it. So feel free to look at it. I don't mind you putting your hands on it. I don't mind you using it. However, you, however your instructors feel you want to use it, feel free to use it. Uh, if it breaks, I'll rebuild it. No issues. Okay? I just want you to use it. That's what it's here for. That is the first one I ever built. This is where Steve and I and many in the back have graduated from. That's why that tribute went to this school. Okay? I wanted you guys to have the very first one. It doesn't have all the glitz and glamour from uh, the others that I've built in the past. But that one is very important to me. Okay? So please use it. It represents the Marine Corps. When you're looking in that glass, you don't only see that neck ribbon and the bust and the coin and everything. I want you to think about the Marine Corps, um, all the armed forces pretty much, but that one represents the Marine Corps. Think about what it was like to live on that island in on Iwo Jima that day or that week or ever, how long whoever was there. Okay, I want you to realize that there was a lot of pain suffered that day. Okay, The picture, the official citation is engraved in there as well. So you can get a, a good view of what he looked like the day he received the Medal of Honor from the President. Um, the coin on top is his official coin. It's Uncommon Valor is the name of the coin. So there is a book written. Uh, if you want to read about, more about Mr. Lucas, feel free to purchase the book. It's still for sale. Um, great read. I've read it at least twice. Now the real story about Mr. Lucas. Um, Mr. Lucas... Fraudulently, I'm, who in here, what's the average age in here, sir? Uh, 16. 16. <coughs> Mr. Lucas fraudulently enlisted in the Marine Corps at 14. He signed his mother's name and then just left. Well, he wanted to go to combat. That's the bottom line. So he uh, was on a station, a base out in uh, California, I believe it was, and he was sick and tired of waiting. They didn't know that he was 14, but he was tired of waiting. So he got in touch with a friend of his, <clears throat> which turned out to be his cousin. And he said, hey, um, I want to go to war. And the cousin said, well, get on that ship right there. It's going to war. So he stowed away on that ship. He was there for over 30 days before they finally called him. He was eating garbage. He was doing everything he could to live on that ship just to make it to combat. He wanted to defend this country that bad. Well, eventually they caught him, and they took him up there, and they stood him up in front of the commander. <clears throat> and the commander said, what's wrong with you, son? 
And he said, sir, all I want to do is go to combat. I want to defend this country. He said, we're going to get you a chance. We're fixing to land on the island of Iwo Jima. You know what that is? He says, I don't have a clue. But if the enemy's there, I'm going to go there and I'm going to find him. So that's when he went on that island and he was in that little trench. And uh, he saw those grenades come in and he pulled them in tight and they exploded. So I asked him, after everything calmed down, after he punched me in my belly, I said, hey, um, one grenade explodes, you die. 99.9% .9 of the time, you die. You dove on two. How did you live? He leaned me in tight. Now, I didn't read you the citation. He, he pulled me in tight and he said, well, only one exploded. He tried to minimize, minimize the situation. So, that was Jack Lucas. Now, Mr. Lucas is deceased now. Cancer finally did what those grenades couldn't. But he died with, those, with that shrapnel in his body. He died a proud man and he's buried in Hasburg, Mississippi. So, if you ever get in Mississippi, feel free to stop and say hello to him. He'd love to see you. Uh, I miss Jack every day. Uh, there's many tributes. I said many. It's probably about 18 around the country. <clears throat> Feel free to go to the website. I have some cards in my pocket. I just didn't get the opportunity to put them down. Feel free to take the cards. Use the website. Uh, however you need to, tell your families that this is up here. Uh, I'm sure some of you have veterans in your families that have probably never seen a Medal of Honor. Now they're technically not going to see the Medal of Honor in that glass because it's engraved into the glass. But just the neck ribbon itself, I confuse you, I can tell by the way you look at it. Uh, I believe it or not, I have a lot of people I confuse with that. But um, uh, the neck ribbon in itself is historical, and I, I really beg you, fine men and women, to use it for your benefit. Do I have any questions at all? I know there's got to be one or two. First of all, there's only like 78 living Medal of Honor recipients left in the country that are still living. I believe 79 actually. There's only been about 3,488 presented out of all the millions that have served this country. That's all that have received it. And approximately 92% of those were deceased when they received it. So uh, I meant the next of kin received it. Simple fact, there are some real interesting facts about the Medal of Honor that I'm sure most of your leadership don't know. Who's, who in here has seen the movie Forrest Gump? <clears throat> There is a real Forrest Gump. Does anybody know that? His name is Sammy Davis. He lives in Indiana. Uh, the only comparison that he has to Forrest was the fact that uh, when Mr. Davis went and received his Medal of Honor from Richard Nixon, they took Forrest Gump's face and put it on <coughs> Sammy Davis's box. So they referred to him as the real Forrest Gump. Who's seen the movie Rambo? There's a real Rambo. And this guy was no joke. He was the real rap. He was an absolute <coughs> warrior from the beginning. Um, his name is Robert Bob Howard. He's deceased as well. Cancer finally got him. Um, he's buried in Alabama. He was put in the, for the Medal of Honor four times, received the Distinguished Service Cross three times, which if you'll look at it right up there, I believe it was, somewhere. Distinguished Service Cross is the second award. First one down for the Medal of Honor. He eventually received the Medal of Honor. Now, all of those times that he was put in for the Medal of Honor were different conflicts in Vietnam. Okay, so he continued to go above and beyond, not to receive the Medal of Honor, but because it was the right thing to do. But eventually he received the Medal of Honor, and uh, I believe he received eight Purple Hearts. And we all know what a Purple Heart takes to get a Purple Heart. So he was a true warrior. How many female medals of honor have ever been presented? Any? Do we have any female medals of honor? Recipients. We have one. Her name is Mary Walker. She was born and raised in Kentucky. She passed away in Indiana. Civil War. What she did was a civilian, and she went on the battlefield and provided surgery to enemy and friendly. It didn't matter. If you were hurt, she was going to take care of you. So she went out there. She did surgery right in the middle of the battle. Shortly after that was over, they presented her with the Medal of Honor. Probably about 25 years ago, someone brought up the fact she was a civilian doing this. They rescinded that Medal of Honor. Then President Clinton was elected and brought back and uh, put in office. And he's like, wait a minute, I don't care if she was a civilian or not. And he gave it right back to her, so she still is the only female Medal of Honor recipient. Um, 
Let me see. I have all kinds of interesting facts about the Medal of Honor, um, but I can't think of all of them. I didn't bring my own card with me today. But feel free to ask any questions at all. All right. Well, if you have any, I'll be around the room after it was over. Me and Steve and uh, all these other fine folks back here. Be more than, some of you will be happy back there to tell you about the clay huts that they attended when they went to Auburndale. <laughs> Especially the one that stuck the tongue at me. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate you. Feel free to use that tribute however you see fit. Okay? Thank you.